They were built to kill. Masters of their worlds, perfectly tuned machines of muscle, instinct, and precision. But in nature, perfection is a trap. A hunter that dominates its world may thrive for thousands of years. But if that world changes, if the prey vanish, the climate shifts, or a new competitor arrives, that mastery turns into a weakness. The traits that once made it unstoppable now hold it back. Throughout Earth's history, the most efficient killers have often been the first to disappear. Evolution doesn't reward dominance, it rewards adaptability. In the end, the survivors are rarely the strongest. They are the ones that can change. That's the quiet irony of life's story. Being the best hunter isn't a triumph. It's often a death sentence. If there's one predator that truly embodies the phrase built to kill, it's Smilodon. It had broad, muscular shoulders and stocky, powerful legs made for explosive ambushes rather than long chases. And of course, its most defining feature, a pair of saber-like canine teeth, each stretching up to seven inches long. Curved daggers built to slice through the thick hides of Ice Age giants. Smilodon wasn't a pursuit hunter like modern cheetahs or wolves. It was an ambusher. It relied on stealth and sudden bursts of power, tackling prey in close quarters with overwhelming strength. Its targets were the giants of the Pleistocene, bison, camels, giant ground sloths, and even young mammoths. In that world, Smilodon was perfectly adapted. Its entire body was built for a specific kind of warfare – strength over speed, precision over endurance. But the Ice Age was a fragile stage, and its script was always changing. As the climate warmed, grasslands gave way to forests. The massive herbivores that Smilodon depended on began to vanish, replaced by smaller, faster animals that demanded agility and endurance rather than brute force. And then came humans, clever new hunters who competed for the same prey and disrupted the delicate balance of the ecosystem. For a specialist like Smilodon, this was a death sentence. Its massive frame, designed for overpowering large animals, was inefficient for chasing smaller ones. Its saber teeth, so effective against thick hides, were fragile and ill-suited for quick kills on nimble prey. And its energy needs were enormous. In a world where food was becoming scarce, being built for power became a liability. Smilodon didn't die out because it was weak. It died because it was too perfect for a world that no longer existed. When the giants vanished, so did the hunter that depended on them. For millions of years, the oceans belonged to a giant. Megalodon was not just a shark, it was a force of nature. Stretching over 15 meters long and weighing as much as 50 tons, it was the largest and most powerful predator the seas had ever seen. Its jaws could crush bone with a bite force greater than any land carnivore in history, and its teeth, serrated and the size of a human hand, could shear through whales with ease. Megalodon ruled a warm, rich ocean filled with prey. Early whales, seals, and sea cows were abundant, and the massive shark thrived in this golden age of marine megafauna. It didn't just hunt, it dominated. Few creatures on Earth could challenge it. For a time, it seemed untouchable. But no empire lasts forever. Around 3.6 million years ago, Earth began to cool. Oceans shifted, sea levels fell, and many of the warm water environments Megalodon relied on started to disappear. Its favorite prey, large marine mammals, began migrating or declining as new predators like early orcas evolved to compete in the same waters. These smaller, more agile hunters worked in packs, attacking together, adapting quickly to the changing seas. Megalodon, on the other hand, was a specialist built for abundance. A solitary giant needing enormous amounts of food and stable, warm oceans. As resources dwindled, its massive size became its greatest weakness. The seas it once ruled could no longer sustain it. If size were the key to survival, the short-faced bear would still walk the earth. Standing over 1.5 meters at the shoulder and towering up to 3.5 meters on its hind legs, it was one of the largest land carnivores to ever exist. Long legs gave it surprising speed for its bulk. Estimates suggest it could outrun a horse over short distances. 
For a time, it was the undisputed heavyweight of Ice Age North America. But its size came with a price. A body that massive demanded a constant supply of food, tens of thousands of calories a day. The short-faced bear likely lived as both a hunter and a scavenger, intimidating smaller predators off their kills. In a land filled with mammoths, bison, and other megafauna, it could afford to live large. Then the world changed. As the Ice Age ended, the great herds began to vanish. Forests replaced open plains, and competition for meat intensified. New arrivals like humans and more adaptable predators, wolves, cougars, and grizzly bears, could survive on smaller prey, mixed diets, and varied habitats. The short-faced bear couldn't. Its enormous frame became a burden in a leaner world. Some scientists believe it was simply too energy-hungry to compete. A hunter that burns more calories than it gains is doomed, no matter its power. And that's what happened here. A creature designed for abundance found itself trapped in scarcity. Australia has always played by its own rules. While the rest of the world evolved cats, dogs, and bears, this continent forged something entirely different. Thylacolio, the marsupial lion. It wasn't a true cat nor a bear, but a descendant of wombat-like herbivores that took a sharp turn down the path of predation. Thylacolio was a puzzle of evolution. Stocky and muscular, with powerful forelimbs, retractable claws, and front teeth shaped like shears rather than fangs. It combined the grip of a big cat with the bite of a bone crusher. In a land of giant kangaroos and wombats, it was perfectly equipped to ambush, overpower, and kill prey many times its size. Within Australia's ancient ecosystems, it was unmatched, a silent ruler in a world without wolves or lions. But even a ruler can't outlast a vanishing kingdom. Around 40,000 years ago, the continent began to dry. Forests shrank, prey species declined, and humans arrived, bringing fire, hunting, and competition. The giant marsupials that sustained Thylacolio disappeared, and with them went the predator that depended on them. It wasn't weakness that doomed it. It was isolation. Evolution had made it the perfect hunter for one world, but that world was fleeting. As the climate shifted and the megafauna vanished, there was no smaller niche it could fall back on, no new strategy it could adopt. For over a hundred thousand years, the direwolf was the heavyweight champion of the Ice Age plains. Stockier and more muscular than today's grey wolf, it was built for power, not speed. Its jaws were stronger, its teeth thicker, made for crushing bone and bringing down the massive herbivores that roamed North America. But its strength came with a cost. Dire wolves were hyper-carnivores, relying heavily on large game and rigid hunting strategies. When the Ice Age ended and the megafauna began to disappear, that precision became a problem. Smaller prey demanded agility, flexibility, and cooperation. Traits better suited to the grey wolf, a close relative that shared the same lands. The grey wolf could adapt, shifting to smaller animals, scavenging when needed, even adjusting pack behaviour. The dire wolf couldn't. Its build and diet were locked to a world that was fading fast. And when food became scarce, the two species likely competed directly. In that contest, the generalist won. Fossil evidence shows the dire wolf clung on for a while but eventually it vanished around 10,000 years ago, while grey wolves spread across the planet. Ironically, despite looking so similar, genetic studies reveal that dire wolves weren't true wolves at all. They belonged to a deeper, older branch of the dog family tree. They had no close allies left to adapt with, no genetic flexibility to draw from. Not every apex predator vanished. Some hunters managed to outlast the Ice Age, not by being perfect, but by being flexible. Take the grey wolf. It never relied on a single prey or a single landscape. From Arctic tundra to grasslands and deserts, wolves learned to adapt. They hunt in packs, scavenge when they must, and change tactics based on what the land offers. When the megafauna disappeared, wolves didn't collapse. They shifted to deer, elk, and smaller prey. Their strength lies in teamwork and adaptability. The brown bear is another survivor of change. Unlike its extinct cousin, the short-faced bear, it never tied itself to one food source. Omnivorous and opportunistic, it hunts when it can, 
but also thrives on berries, roots, fish and insects. That flexibility allowed it to survive drastic climate shifts and spread from North America to Eurasia. It's not a perfect hunter, but it's a perfect survivor. Even the crocodile, one of Earth's oldest predators, owes its endurance to versatility. It's not fast, not specialized, and not dependent on a single ecosystem. Crocodiles eat fish, birds, mammals, anything that comes close enough. They can survive months without food and tolerate both fresh and salt water. In a changing world, patience and simplicity have kept them alive for over 200 million years. And then there are the big cats, the modern heirs to Smilodon's throne. The lion, once widespread across Africa, Asia, and Europe, thrives in open savannas by hunting in coordinated prides, but can also scavenge or adapt to new prey when herds move. The tiger, although a solitary hunter, has learned to survive in rainforests, swamps, and even snowy forests, taking everything from wild boar to fish. And finally, humans, the ultimate generalists. We were never the fastest or strongest hunters, but we became the most adaptable. We shaped tools, learned new strategies, and altered our environments instead of waiting for evolution to do it for us. Our survival has always depended on our ability to change faster than the world around us. Across every species, the pattern is clear. Survival doesn't belong to the strongest. It belongs to those who refuse to stay the same. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.